Hello students, today we are going to look at geography paper 1 revision and we are going to cover the following topics that is folding and its economic importance, we have glaciation, we have formation of a red and a ribbon lake. Uh, we are going to look at various questions and uh, question 1 is give three ways in which faults develop in the crust and one way is that when rocks are subjected to tensional forces, we have when rocks are subjected to compression of horses and we have when rocks are subjected to tear or shear. Then with the need of a double labeled diagram, explain how compressional forces can lead to the formation of a rift valley. And one way is that layers of rocks are subjected to compression of forces. And as we can see in this diagram, we have the layers of rocks that are subjected to compression of forces. Then we have two parallel folds. The two parallel folds, these fold lines over here, uh, usually develop. Then the outer blocks are thrust upwards. Uh, the outer blocks, we have these particular outer blocks or the side blocks that are thrust uh, upwards. Then we have the middle block, uh, usually it sinks. And after that, the protruding areas, this place that we call an escarpment, uh, usually are eroded by erosion or they usually collapse. Hence, we usually leave out now this particular valley or the Great Rift Valley over that particular area. Then giving specific examples, describe three ways in which faulting may influence drainage systems. Uh, if a rift faulting occurs in an enclosed area, a basin may be formed which are occupied with water and form lakes. For example, you have Lake Trukana, Baringo and Nakuru. Then some rivers, e.g. River Mara, Kerio, flow along fault lines that forming a fault-guided drainage patterns. We have also uplifting of land at El Geo escarpment caused it to reverse or change its direction of flow, if it reverse Oceani. Then we have faulting occurs across a river valley. It may cause the river to disappear into the ground through the fault line, e.g. River Kerio. Then we have when faulting occurs across a river valley, vertical displacement of land may occur forming a waterfall, for example, the Thompson's Falls. And then faulting may lead to the formation of escarpments with springs forming at the base due to exposure of the water table, e.g. springs at the base of Mau Guruman escarpments. Then we have explained three ways in which uh, features resulting from faulting are of economic importance. We have blocks, mountains, are source of rivers which provide us with water for industrial, agricultural, domestic or hydroelectric power production. Then you have the Rift Valley formation has led to exposure of minerals such as diatomite or soda ash which are mined on the Rift Valley floor. Then we have mountains are formed through faulting and attract rain which favor agricultural activities or settlements. Then we have Rift Valley lakes are important fishing grounds or provide water for irrigation and transportation and also faulted features provide scenery which promotes uh, the tourism industry. Distinguish between valley glaciers and ice sheets. So valley glaciers are formed on the highlands above the snow line, while ice sheets are found in lowlands in the altitude regions. Then another difference is that valley glaciers are confined in valleys while ice sheets cover extensive landscapes. Then describe how each of the following glacial features are formed. We have a ret, and a ret is a narrow ridge of rocks that separates two valleys. It's typically formed when two glaciers erode parallel U-shaped valleys. And a ribbon lake, a ribbon lake is a long and very deep finger-shaped lake, usually uh, found in a glacial trough. And we have an image uh, of a red. So we have this particular area here. And then this particular area is what we call a red. And how it's formed, we have that two adjacent cracks or hollow exists on a mountainside. The two hollow cracks are filled with ice. The ice erodes the sides through plucking and deepens the hollow through abrasion. Through erosion, the back 
walls of the hollows usually recede, then eventually the hollows or circus are separated by a knife-edged ridge. Now these ridges are what we call a red. Then we have a ribbon lake here. For example, we have an example of a ribbon lake. And usually this is a depression within a glacial trough where differential erosion has taken place, especially areas that have less resistant rocks. Then at the point where two glaciers converge, erosion is greater, resulting in the formation of in the formation of a glacial depression called a rock basin. Then they also form in areas with less resistant rocks where the glacier removes the removes these through abrasion or plucking leaving behind a shallow depression called a rock basin. Later the, during the post glacial period water may accumulate in the rock basin uh, to form lakes uh, called finger or ribbon lakes. Uh, explain four positive effects of glaciations in lowland areas. And one, it provides fertile soils for arable farming. Ice sheets in their scoring effect reduce the land surface and depth to expose mineral seams which become easy to extract. Then outwash plains comprise of sands and gravel which are used as materials for building and construction. We also have lakes formed through glaciations can be exploited for various economic uses such as fishing, transportation, and as tourist attractions. And also ice melts into rivers which is exploited for domestic use. Then we also have graciated features or tourist attractions and graciated lowlands are generally flat due to erosion and deposition and are ideal for construction of building and communication lines. So with that... Uh, See you in the next video.